very nice. Right now, I'm packing my backpack and suitcase. Some of my subscribers ask me what kind of gears I use to shoot YouTube videos. So maybe this is a good opportunity for me to do what's in my bag kind of thing. I've always wanted to do that, but I wasn't sure if you guys would be interested. So yeah, if you're not interested in cameras, you can skip to the next topic. This is how my camera bag looks. I have two Sony a7S III's as my main cameras. Basically when I vlog, I set one camera to point at me and use the other camera to shoot close-up shots. And here is a7S III for photography and time-lapse. DJI Air 2S for aerial shots. Over here is the latest addition to my camera family, Insta360 ONE RS 1 in 360 edition. Ooh, that's long. This thing can shoot 6.1K 360 video. You can shoot very unique shots with this. Here is the smallest action camera in the world, my telescope lens, macro lens, wide-angle lens, wireless microphone. There are so many other gears I want to introduce, but it's gonna take me forever to talk my love for cameras. So maybe I should make a dedicated video for it another time. So yeah, basically I'm super hyped to come back to Malaysia and make more videos. But at the same time, I have some worries too. The biggest concern I have regarding my flight is the safety of my baggage, especially my desktop. I always use iMac 27 inch for video editing and everything. My type of editing requires a fast PC with a big screen, so it is a must item for me and I need to take it with me. The problem is it is too heavy and big for me to take it as a carry-on baggage and too fragile to check in as a check baggage. It is not impossible to check in as a check baggage, but I'm too afraid about the damage during the flight. I thought of using international shipping, but first of all, it's still not 100% safe. And second, it's gonna take longer. And third, it is more expensive. I even thought of buying second iMac in Malaysia, but it's gonna kill my wallet, you know? So it seems like checking in as a check baggage is the way to go, but I'm so scared. Anybody who with iMac 27 inch or big desktop, I wanna hear your advice. Oh, by the way, initially I was gonna fly with Air Asia because in 2020, my flight back to Japan got canceled due to outbreak of COVID-19 and they refunded the flight ticket as a credit shell. So I wanted to spend that credit for this time. But the problem was my credit went missing. Yes, it's gone. A little while ago, AirAsia announced that they have extended the credit show validity to three years because during the pandemic, their international flight were closed down, so nobody had a chance to use their credit. And I know that my credit should be valid until 2023, but for some reason, my credit didn't get extended and got expired before I could use it. I've been trying to contact them for about a month to get the credit back in my account, but still there is no progress on the case. I couldn't wait any longer because the flight day was getting close and the flight ticket was getting higher. So I ended up booking other airline. That was quite frustrating. I know it's an LCC company and it took me to so many destinations for really cheap prices. So I can put up with small mistakes or small problems, but their reply is so slow that I'm starting to get worried if I can get back my money. So this is a small struggle I had when I was booking my flight. It is not a big deal, but I just wanted to share what happened and my feeling. Regarding the vaccination, I had two doses of Sinovac back in Malaysia last year and then returned to Japan. And it turned out Sinovac is not on the list of Japan's approved vaccines. So I had to do the whole vaccination process all over again. I took two doses of Pfizer in Japan. So in total, I got four doses of vaccination so far. According to the vaccination status defined by Malaysian government, two doses of Sinovac is considered partially vaccinated. You need to get three shots to get four qualified as fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, if you are Pfizer, you only need two shots to be fully vaccinated. So I am considered fully vaccinated in Malaysia, so I don't have to go through COVID tests or quarantine upon arrival. But if you are partially vaccinated, you're gonna have to do COVID tests and quarantine. This is something you should keep in your mind if you're planning to travel between Japan and Malaysia. I registered my Japanese vaccination certificate in my, my Sichuan my in my in my my 
damn, I cannot say this. But the vaccination status didn't get updated here in this page. Seems like overseas vaccination won't be reflected in this page. So hopefully this status not being updated won't